Hello folks and welcome to our new Bible study on Hebrews. Um, we're going to do this every Wednesday evening. It'll be going out at 7.30 um, just as we start to look at this book. So as we gather, let's just pause and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just again thank you for who you are and for all your goodness. Lord, thank you that you are indeed the God who is so interested in us, who cares for us and loves us. And Lord, you have given us your words to teach us, to guide us, direct us, to correct us. Lord, you, you've given us so much. Um, and we just, as we come to study it now, I ask that you would help us, that you would open our eyes, that we'd be able to understand what it says and what it's about and how it applies to yourself. So Father, thank you. We ask that you would continue with us now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, so thanks for gathering this evening, um, just as we come to look at this book. I don't know if you've done a study before uh, on the book of Hebrews. I don't know if this is your first time. Um, but whenever we come to any Bible passage, whenever we come to any book or any letter um, in, in the Bible, we would always tend to look at a little bit of background of it, first of all. Maybe we look at who the author is, who it was written to, what sort of time period it was written in, uh, and maybe sort of from the outset try to set out what a few of the, the big themes are in the book or in the letter. In this letter um, of Hebrews, for the New Testament, it's quite unusual because there's nothing to state who the writer is, who is the author, who penned this letter, doesn't tell us. Uh, there's lots of people who try to guess who the author is, who try to say for one reason or another why they think it is a certain person. But it doesn't tell us. So we just have to accept that the letter is there and it is written by somebody and it has a point. The other thing is it doesn't specifically tell us either who it is written to, who received this letter in the first place. And for it to be shared around to then to end up in our New Testament. Um, again, that happens with a lot of letters that we do know who they're written to. You know, it, it was the form of a formal letter um, of the time that you declared who you were and who you were writing to. But we don't have that. And again, we don't have a time period um, for when it was written. Again, scholars have um, guessed and speculated um, something it's before... Um, 70 AD before the destruction of the temple we just don't know for certain um, but what we do know is that it's in the Bible we do believe that the Bible is God's inspired word that we have the Bible for a reason and all of the parts of the Bible for a reason uh, and that's why we study it together that's why we want to look at what it's all about so just right at the very start um, one of the things that we might sort of want to keep in our mind is what might be a topic or a major thing which is running through this book. And just from the very word go, let's just keep in mind that this book very much deals with how we approach God. So as we come to it, let's read together some of the verses, first of all, found in chapter one. Um, there are only 14 verses, so let's read them all together. To begin with, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, let's hear God's word. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. The son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down at the place of honour at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. For God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. You are my son, today I have become your father. God also said, I will be his father and he will be my son. And when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let all God's angels worship him. Regarding the angels, he said, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants like flames of fire. 
But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You rule with a scepter of justice. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. He also says to the Son, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth. You made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will fold them like a cloak and discard them like old clothing. But you are always the same. You will live forever. And God said, and God never said to any of his angels, sit in the place of honour at my right hand until I humble your enemies and make them a footstool under your feet. Therefore, Angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for God, for, for people who will inherit salvation. Amen. And that's Hebrews chapter one. Just to say at the very start, this is a different sort of Bible study because normally when we do Bible study, we sit and we'll, we'll talk about it together uh, and we can interact. Um, that's a lot more difficult in this day and age at the minute. Um, so hence the reason why we do it digitally. But please don't let that put you off from asking questions. If you have a question which comes up as, as we look at Hebrews, please feel free to either call me, email or text or send a, a, a private message through Facebook. Whatever way you want to get in touch. Uh, uh, and then I can come back to you and I can answer that question or we can chat about it, we can discuss it. Um, and remember as well, I, I always say when we come to Bible study, Every question is a valid question. If you have it, don't feel silly or stupid or think you're daft because you want to ask that question. Because most of the time, we'll all have similar sort of questions. We're just not brave enough maybe to ask those questions. And if you have that question, somebody else will. But as you ask it, and as you work your way through that, and maybe as I answer some of those questions as we do this broadcast um, in, in subsequent weeks, if I come back to something, Maybe that will help somebody else to understand something or start a thought process with them where they, they dig deeper. So all questions are good. All questions are relevant. Um, that's how we learn, is by asking questions. You know, we would think whenever we, we, what we were taught, whenever we come to a Bible passage, um, it's like W5, um, who, what, where, when, why, is the questions you ask and how. You know, and the big question of how is, how does that apply to me? And as we go through Hebrews, we will be asking those questions as we go along to see what it's saying to us, how it's saying it to us, and how it might apply to us. So Hebrews. Who were the Hebrews? If you if you think of if you, if you take Hebrews as a title, um, who were they? Hebrew is a term used for God's people, for who we might also call the Israelites. Anybody who came as a direct descendant was a Hebrew. It's also the word used for their language. So maybe that gives us a little clue just at the start of, of who this is written to. That it's written to maybe Jewish Christians um, as they follow God. And who knows, maybe in their faith they're struggling. Maybe the, the author knows that. Maybe they're having doubts and he wants to write to them to reassure them. But as he starts to write to them, he, he wants to remind them of days gone by, how things have happened in the past and how things have changed for now. So he says, Long ago God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. So he reminds them that God has spoken to them in the past. But the way he says in many times, in many ways, through the prophets, there's a sense there of a close relationship of God wanting a close relationship with his people. Always wanting them to hear his voice, to understand his voice, and hence the reason why he used different prophets, not always the same people. Um, because you know what it's like, as, as different people speak, you will hear people differently. You'll understand people differently. Um, but it's that sense of God wanting that relationship with, with people wanting them to hear and also wanting them to understand him and what he is saying. But the author very quickly um, highlights that as days gone by. 
um, that the days of the, those prophets are gone. Yes, we have their writings. Yes, we have what they said. But now things are different. Because in verse 2 he says, And now in these final days, he that is God has spoken to us through his Son. So things have changed. Where God spoke to the people before through the prophets, Jesus has now come. Jesus has lived among the people. Um, he has walked with them and he has talked with them and he is showing them what God wants. Um, Jesus is, is showing them that he is the Messiah, that he's the one who was promised. Something which the Jews, the Hebrews, the Israelites, whatever term you want to use for them, something which they struggled with. Um, they didn't see Jesus as the Messiah. They, they thought, yes, he was a good man. They thought maybe he was another prophet. But a lot of them failed to see the, the fulfilment of prophecy in Jesus. When Isaiah talks about a lamb led to the slaughter, how Jesus was led to the slaughter, how he was silent and, and by, by his stripes we are healed, how through Jesus' death we are made perfect. And that then changes our approach to God. So the author in um, this first chapter lays out Jesus's credentials as such. He wants to tell them why he believes Jesus is the Messiah, the promised one, why he is the son of God, why he is different. And it's just unusual at the very end, he, he says about angels, therefore angels are only servants. Spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. Maybe there was some sort of misunderstanding of angels and maybe people were elevating angels to positions where they shouldn't, nearly worshipping the angels. Whereas the author said, but, but they're only there to serve. They're created just like God has created everything else. Um, but we'll come to that in time. But let's look, first of all, at what it says. So it said, like I said, verse two, now he's spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance and through the Son, he created the universe. You know, that reflects back to um, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And nothing was created except through the Word. Showing us that Jesus is God's Son. And it just says that, you know, through the Son, he created the universe. That, that Jesus is part of all of this. That he is part of the plan which God has. Because God's always had the plan of how to restore um, his relationship with his created beings, with us. And Jesus is very much part of that plan. Even down to the fact that Jesus was there whenever everything was created. Verse 3, the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Jesus told his disciples... Again, in John 14, um, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father. Jesus told people very clearly that he was the image. He was the lens as such through which we see God. Um, as we read through the Bible, um, nowhere do we get a physical description of God. In fact, we get the opposite where it's, we can't see God. Um, one, because we're not worthy to because of our sin, but also because he doesn't have that physical form. But the physical form that we can see is Jesus. And therefore we should see God through Jesus. And we're told as well that Jesus is pure and holy and blameless, just like his father, who you know, God. So again, this passage, it's just telling people, you, you know Jesus. Maybe for yourself you had actually seen him and maybe there's people who are reading this who did actually meet Jesus. And the author said, look, you've seen Jesus, so you've seen God. You've seen the nature of Jesus. That is the nature of God. How, how he's perfect, how he's holy, how he's patient, how he, how he cares for people. How as well he got angry because the temple had been uh, distorted and changed and defiled, you know. He's letting the people know exactly who Jesus is. He says, when he cleansed us from our sins, he sat down at the place of honour at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. He tells the people, Jesus has done exactly what he was supposed to do. 
Jesus came for a reason. The reason was to bring us salvation, to bring us forgiveness. Because again, you know, the people are, it's, it's sacrifices is their means. You know, they, they believe so much in the sacrifices. And yes, God set up that system for them. But Jesus superseded that. Jesus changed that. He brought a new covenant. And that's what he said um, whenever he was here on earth. that He, he was the start of the new covenant. Um, that sacrifices no longer held what they should hold. They, 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 you know, they were that. that wasn't the centre of everything any longer. But it was Jesus. You know, look at how the, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Whenever Jesus died on the cross. You know, Jesus sets the new relationship. Jesus sets the new promises between God and people. And it says about how he had done that work. How he sat down at the place of honour at the right hand of God in heaven. This shows that the, you know, it says, the verse 4 goes on to say, this shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. Again, how um, Jesus is far more important than any angel because he's not a created being he is the one the only god he is he is god uh, and the angels are made to serve him you know and it talks about how the name god gave him is greater than all their names it talks about messiah the promised one you know no angel ever gets a name like that it's only uh, jesus who gets that sort of name he is the one who has promised and in the rest of the chapter um the, the author does very much lay out Jesus' credentials and there's so many biblical references in what he says. It says, God never said to any angel what he said to Jesus. You're my son, today I have become your father. That's a quote from Psalm 2 verse 7. God also said, I will be his father and he will be my son. It's taken from 2 Samuel um, 7 14. It says, when he brought his supreme son into the world, God said, let the angels worship him. That's from Deuteronomy 6, um, chapter 32. Uh, sorry, it's from Deuteronomy 32, verse 43, found in verse 6 of this passage. Then in verse 7, it says, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants, like flames of fire. Again, it's another reference to the Psalms. Psalm 104, verse 4. Um, it says, but till Sonny says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. You rule with the scepter of justice. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, O God, your God has anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than on anyone else. That's a quote from Psalm 45, 45 verses 6 to 7. And, and just in that, where it talks about pouring out the oil of joy, how oil was used to anoint a king. How, um, if you think of of Samuel as he went to David as a boy to pour oil to say that he was going to be the next king of the nation but it says how God has poured out so much more oil on Jesus than anyone else again showing exactly who he is and it goes on verses 10 to 12 you have a quote from Psalm 102 verses 25 to 27 and then and then in verse 13 which says, sit at a place of honour at my right hand until I humble your enemies and make them a footstool under your feet. That's a reference from Psalm 110 verse 1. But again, pointing to now that Jesus is in heaven with his father, um, what will ultimately happen? How sin and Satan will be defeated? Um, how it says, sit in a place of honour at my right hand until I humble your enemies until I make a make them a footstool under your feet. That's submission, that's control, that's that's defeat for them. And then that last verse, therefore angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. You know, different religions um, around the world, and even different branches of Christianity, at times we, we think of angels in a different way. We, we When we talk about the heavenly bodies, and, and, and maybe... Certain people would worship angels and, and elevate them up. But angels, again, are God's created being like us. They're created for a specific role. They're created to serve God. They're created to um, servants. It talks about how they're sent to care for people. That's care for us. They're actually sent to care for us, for people. 
and, and the scriptures talk about whenever you meet angels and when you've done things and haven't done things and how we will encounter angels without realising it in our daily lives. How angels were sent to care for Jesus as he came out of the wilderness. How he could have summoned an army of angels um, to take him off the cross and defeat everybody. You know, it, it, it's incredible to think of God's creation. So it's getting to know our place in creation, what creation is all about and then how we approach God. Maybe, as this author is, has been writing this letter, um, people are thinking of going back to their old Jewish ways. People are thinking of going back to sacrifices. Think People think of going back to um, not recognising Jesus as Messiah, as Saviour, as God's Son. And he just wants to remind them exactly of what has happened. And the best way he has of doing that is to point them to God's Word. God's word speaks to all of us. God's word is true, we can trust it. And God's word is prophetic. It tells us about what has happened, what will happen. Um, it, it shows us the future, um, about the defeat of sin. It lines, outlines Jesus and him coming and what he will do for us. Um, and, and, you know, right the way through scripture. But to be able to understand that, to be able to know it, we have to read it. Um, you know, and that's what we are encouraged to do. Yes, in day whenever that's written, very few people can read. But they gather together for someone to read to them. Uh, and, and it's a, such an important part of them. Whenever they gathered, was that somebody opened the letters and they read the letters. And they would have read them again and again. Today we are blessed. Most of us know how to read. And the vast majority of us have not just one Bible, but multiple Bibles on our shelf. All different translations. We have commentaries. And we have things to help us. We have the internet where we can look it up as well. But what good is that if it sits on the shelf? What good is that if we don't open it? If we don't read it? Um, if we have trouble reading, um, again, there, there are different things. We can press the button and it will read it to us so that we hear God's word. And as we hear God's word, as we study God's word, then he starts to speak to us through it. So this author, just in this very first chapter, just wants to remind us of that and remind us of how we approach God. We approach God through the lens of Jesus. We don't approach him through the lens of sacrifices and old covenants, but we think about what Jesus has done for us. How he has come and given up heaven to live on this earth, how he was born as a, as a baby, how he grew up, how he lived amongst us, how he then sacrificed his life so that we could have our sins forgiven. And what that means now, that now he sits at God's right hand. And again, the Bible tells us he sits and he intercedes for us. So he sits beside his father and talks to his father. And as, as the accuser, Satan comes and says, oh, look at them, they're bad. Jesus says, no, no, they're covered by my blood. Their sins are forgiven. And that is the covenant, the promise, the relationship that we have. So let me encourage you to go back again and to read um, the first chapter of Hebrews. Yeah, it might jump around a little bit with all the different quotes that are in it. But that's just simply the author showing you who Jesus is. Reinforcing that and, and showing the, the biblical basis um, for why he believes Jesus is who he says he is. Um, you know, you, if you don't believe what Jesus said, then read the Bible. Read what it says in the Old Testament scriptures. And again, that's why probably it is written to Jews. They had those those scriptures. They had, they'd grown up with those. They'd grown up with the Psalms and the writings of the, of the prophets of old. So they would have known them and heard them so many times. And he said, listen to what is written and understand and let that change your relationship with God. You know, the most important thing is that God wants to have that relationship with us. He's willing to do, he sent a son freely to die for us. So let's just accept him for who he is and let him change and transform us and transform our relationship with him. This is a short study for this evening, just to get us going, um, just to get us uh, back into the way again of, of doing a Bible study. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please point them back to me. Um, give me a call, like I say, get an email or text. I'd love to hear from you to, to see what you think. Uh, I just encourage you then for next week to then reread chapter one and then start to read chapter two. Uh, and next Wednesday we'll come and we'll look at chapter two uh, and how then the, the the writer takes up further uh, in this letter. But let's pause for now and let's pray. 
Father, thank you for your word again. Thank you for how it teaches us about who Jesus is, your son, and where he is now, that he is not um, lying in a grave with his body corroded, but rather that he is with you in heaven, sitting at your right hand in the place of honour, which shows exactly who he is. And thank you that now he intercedes for us. Lord, may that change how we think of Jesus, how we think of our relationship with you. May that make it more rich, more alive to us. And Lord, may we want to learn more about you and grow in our relationship with you and grow, grow closer to you each day. Father, week by week as we come to study Hebrews, just open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to you. Help us to see and to understand. Help us to grow closer, we pray. So Lord, we thank you. And be with us now the rest of this evening and the rest of this week, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Folks, can I just take this opportunity to say to you as well, um, we did open for church last Sunday. It was great. We had about 30 people there and it was lovely to be back in the building to worship. We were also worshipping online together as well. And I know a number of folks joined us online and that was great. If you're feeling confident enough to join us, please do. Um, phone down to Barbara in the office or phone and leave a message to the machine. Or if you can't do that, then, then contact me either by phone or by message as well. And let me know that you want to come down to the service uh, and, and how many are coming. And then we can make sure that as we arrange the seating to be socially distant, to be safe, that everyone is sitting in a way which keeps us all safe but then brings us together so that we can worship God together, that we can hear his word. Um, we've done packs as well for the children. Um, again, we post a little picture on Facebook about that. So uh, as the children each week hear their story uh, about what's being said to them, they have something to remind them of that and something to do then as I talk to the adults and then they have their take home sheet as well uh, so that the adults, parents, grandparents can go over that story with them and there'll be a memory verse in that as well. So thanks for joining with me this evening um, and I just care, pray that you have a, a blessed evening and take care for the rest of the week. So take care. See you soon. Again soon. Bye.